Hello everyone and welcome to Nebula Cohort 2 last session. Today is our final presentation for group two. I'm very excited and uh, I hope you are excited too. So uh, please, uh, we have uh, a full session today. So uh, we have a notepad in the chat, uh, the notepad link. Please add your name in the uh, presenter uh, number you want to present at. We will go for uh, the presenter order in the notepad. So please add your name besides the number you want to present at. Also, uh, as usual, we have uh, an icebreaker question. Please add your name in the uh, notepad too. And our icebreaker question for today, what are you looking forward uh, to after the Nebula graduation? I hope everyone can add their names in the notepad. And don't forget uh, the, our session uh, are uh, being recorded. So please, uh, if you want to turn off your camera, uh, you can do it. And if you don't mind, we like to see your faces. And don't forget our code of conduct as usual. And you, uh, if you are facing any issue, please email us. So uh, without further ado, we want to start, but uh, there's no name on the presenting number one. So uh, I will give a minute for everyone to add their names in the notepad. The presenter's name uh, starts at line uh, 53 in the notepad. So you can go in the order you want to present that. Okay, we have presenter number one, Majak Adel. You can start. Are you ready to present? Uh, yes, yes, I'm ready to present. You can share your screen if you have a presentation. Great. Okay, are you able to see my screen? Yes, you can start. Okay, uh, so uh, the session so far has been about open science uh, and uh, I thank you all for joining. So my presentation is mostly based on the instruction that we were given. Uh, who am I in terms of my background? Uh, what did I learn and how I uh, how I intend to apply what I've been learned, what uh, I've been able to learn. Yeah, so it was a five minute presentation and I'll be short as possible to ensure that everyone also is able to present. So my background of study is that I'm an environmental geologist and uh, with a background of understanding on impacts of climate change on ecosystems, especially on the South Globe and human settlement evidenced by the rising of sea levels, uh, intensified storm uh, change in precipitation patterns, especially for the rains and also the aspect of urban sprawl. Uh, my field of expertise revolve around land cover changes product, and this is mostly to analyze the effects uh, of, uh, uh, of change in biodiversity, especially by the impacts of climate change, uh, deforestation, biodiversity loss, and urban sprawl. Uh, what I was able to learn uh, mostly that was favorite to me is the, uh, uh, the element of fair data principle, especially uh, making our data findable. And one of the things that made me love this is that when I do research, especially uh, if I have a, an account in or CID, then I'm able to publish my work. And through that, you find that other people are also able to see what I'm doing 
and this is making my research to be findable and through this it will ensure that uh, the scope of research is able to advance since other people can see what I'm doing and they can be able to advance. So my application from this study is that I intend to use my skills and role to foster project success, especially in effective urban uh, planning infrastructure strategy. And this will help, especially with the uh, recent catastrophe of climate change. Yeah, so that is my short presentation. And thank you for the uh, successful uh, program. Thank you. Thank you, Magic. And this is so exciting is the climate change is uh, a really a uh, good topic to talk about. And this is one of the SDGs as we all know. So uh, let's go for the next presenter, Suhana. Are you ready to present? Yes, ma'am. Okay, you can share your screen now. Can you put your presentation in the presenter view? Let's see, this my screen. You can see your screen, but uh, not in the presenter view. So. Can you make it a full screen, Suhana? Yes, we can see it now. You can start. Hello, everyone. My name is Suhana. Today, I am uh, thrilled to share my journey uh, in the OLS NASA Nebula program. Uh, highlighting my research experiences and future aspirations. I, sorry, uh, this is my short introduction. Uh, I, I have recently graduated from uh, University of Dhaka, uh, Department of Geography and Environment, and currently uh, studying master's program uh, in the same department, and my nationality is Bangladesh. Let me start my showing of all my uh, peaceful campus. Uh, this is also my second home, uh, where uh, I have nurtured my passion uh, for environmental sustainability. Especially, uh, I focus. Um, I am focusing uh, on wetland conservation, uh, environmental sustainability, biodiversity loss and adaptation, and uh, uh, climate change. Um, as a GIS and remote sensing enthusiast, this program has been uh, instrumental in shaping my technical expertise and uh, research approach. Next, I am uh, I currently I am working on 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 project related to uh, water uh, conservation. This program uh, is uh, um, arranged by uh, SARC, that means Space and Environmental Research Center. Um, this is a local nonprofit organization. Uh, here is my uh, NDWI uh, map uh, in my local uh, area and water body uh, shows, shows that. Uh, here, this is uh, presented by LULC map, land use land cover map uh, in 2013 and 2023. Here is the various gap, uh, the water body uh, from 2013 and 2020. And my next project 
but uh, it's ongoing uh, map today and rebuild tomorrow. This project uh, is uh, arranged by group mappers. Um, this is um, Bangladeshi organization that um, working very various purposes, uh, especially public health related. Um, they are arranged by flooding um, situation uh, in Bangladesh. Uh, here is me and my short contribution uh, to local guide uh, as a local guide in Google Maps. Uh, I'm uh, heading level six and uh, open stream map um, uh, is uh, also contributed by me uh, in case uh, i am free i will try to lot of contribution and this is my achievement uh, 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 with uh, um, silent resilience to do of species adapting uh, to survival in disaster prone, prone ecosystems. Uh, it uh, uh, indicates the uh, biodiversity loss and adaptation with climate change. And, and uh, I uh, will uh, share my key learnings from open space. Uh, actually, I learned uh, open science um, about open science principles and next practical tools and skills. Uh, uh, an example GitHub and GitHub repository. And next, uh, my personal book. Example, uh, I this is presenting with international. Uh, communities uh, and uh, this image uh, I took from during the GitHub session. And my short term goal is create a GitHub repository for my current and future research uh, program and long term vision to open access publishing and encouraging data sharing practices among my all research communities. And I will arrange workshop uh, to introduce open source concepts uh, to my department or uh, youth uh, organization. Sorry, Sohana, for interrupting you, but you uh, are um, out of very excited. Especially Pinkish, thank you. Thank you, Sohana. Thank you for your presentation and let's go for our third presenter for today, Sandy. <clears throat> Are you ready to present? Yes, yes I'm ready to present. Uh, yeah, shall I just go ahead and share my screen? Yeah. Recording in progress. Randy, you can share your screen. Okay, so I was on mute. I was speaking. Hope you can hear me clearly now. <laughs> Yeah, I'm so sorry for that. No problem, you can start. All right. Um, so I, I hope to keep the time. I'll try my possible best. So um my presentation, I'm just going to talk about uh what I do, my work and the lessons from the training, and how I also intend to apply to open science. How I intend to apply open science to my work. So um my name is Good News. 
Uh, good news, Sandy. Uh, I'm a software developer and also an open source contributor. I'm someone that is passionate about uh, open source because it's it's an avenue for me to improve my skills and also for me to learn from a diverse community. So I really enjoy open source and the opportunity it brings to me in terms of my career growth. It's something that really excites me. And I was, I'm always excited to you know learn from the community. I'm from Nigeria, currently in Port Harcourt, Nigeria. So my goal is to be an engineering manager, specifically in an open source community. So I believe that all my skill set, my technical skill set, and learning how to manage community should be able to converge so that I could be a, a good engineering manager in the future. Um, I joined Open Science. Um, my professional, uh, I'll say my BSc, I graduated in, uh, in petroleum engineering, so I didn't have really have that uh, foundation in tech. But I, I really joined Open Science Community through the outreach internship. I was mentored by Bato, Bato uh, Amari. Yeah. And sorry, this is really deep. Oh, yeah. And also uh, during my op in, uh, outreach, in, outreach internship, I got to build the open innovation platform that was uh, is a platform to make open source resources accessible for the Arabic speaking country. And luckily, we were able to you know, get a grant for it. It's something I'm most excited about. Like, it, we won an, a grant for it, and it was a really good one for me. And I'm also part of the Tony Way community, where I work with the translation working group and uh, also contribute to the book dash events. Um, also a community manager at the UNICEF Rapid Pro. Uh, based on the program we are doing with the DPG, Digital Public Goods. So we have this three, six months training with them, where they just teach us how to build skills in, as a community manager. Okay, so um, that's what I do, and that's all about me. Um, regarding the training, so what I've learned from the training specifically is regarding open data. I, I really like the session where we talked about open data and how it makes uh, data accessible for people from different culture and how people are able to customize different solutions based on this data. It was really a, a delightful uh, breakout section for me, and it's always in my head. And also how... Um, Open data, open data facilitates collaboration and transparency. Uh, it's 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 those are the things I've learned and how open data is really important to us, speci specifically for the open science community. Uh, also about data access and how to access data, the portals, GitHub and data repositories, and documentation for data management itself too metadata and licensing. Licensing is really important because I remember the work we are doing in the Open Innovation Platform, licensing is really important for that work and I learned something from that uh, conversation. Okay, how am I going to apply my open science practice to my work? My intention is to improve the Open Innovation Platform. I'm currently working within the Open Science Community Saudi Arabia. Localization is a feature I hope to improve from my lessons from uh, what I've learned from the training, accessibility to, to improve accessibility to uh, make it accessible to diverse people. Also, in my work in the Tony Way organization, I hope to also apply the lessons to creating chapters. The Book Dash event is really us creating chapters and uh, and improving the uh, the uh, the handbook where we where uh, where we help uh, improve research practices. Yeah. So, um, watching time and also lastly. Uh, also, to I learn skills in community management, and I'm hoping to use that in my work with the DPG UNICEF Rapid Pro. And yeah, so finally, that's that's just it about me. And I'm open for questions. You can find me on LinkedIn and also on Twitter. And I enjoy this quote that says that your desired opportunities are also waiting for you wherever they are. They're also waiting for you to reach with them. Yeah. So thank you for that. And once again, thank you to the OLS team for having this wise, this wonderful training for us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sandy. This is a really great presentation. Thank um, you. Let's go over uh, Benton. Are you ready to present? Yes, I'm, uh, I'm ready to present. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, you can share your screen. I'm just, I wish I was the first to present because that presentation from Sandy was so nicely, nicely done. <laughs> I don't know whether, can you see my screen? Okay. 
Yes, we can see it. Can you make it a full screen? Okay, that's what I'm trying to. Okay. Okay, thank you. So I'm uh, Benton Utiano. I'm originally from Kenya, but currently I'm living in South Africa where I work as a postdoctoral researcher at the WASH Research and Development Center at the University of KwaZulu-Natal in Durban, South Africa. So I have a background in chemistry with a strong focus on uh, resource-oriented wastewater treat, wastewater and sanitation waste management. So some of my roles include student supervision, teaching, project management, writing proposals for uh, research grants. And I've done some pieces of short trading in open data for WASH. So that's basically using R to analyze data and make it reproducible and easily publishable. Systematic reviews, policy, and uh, science uh, diplomacy. So the main reason for joining the OLS training is because of uh, of my experience at work. So what I've realized, most funders, they are really pushing for open uh, science or open data management. So whenever we apply for funding, there's always that element of how will you manage your data or manage your project. So for a long time, it has always been like a, a tick box for, for most of us. And I've just noticed that uh, most funders no longer just want you to, to tick that box, but they want you to be intentional and have a clear uh, plan for your project and data management. So right now there's a proposal that I'm writing or that I'm leading. So the proposal is being developed by a consortium of, 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 of team members from different countries and I'm the lead. And uh, in that proposal, there's an aspect of data management where they want to see how we will manage our digital outputs. They want to see the expected outputs. They want to see the how we will conform to the policies on open data, fire principles, when it, and they want to see how we will manage our personnel and how we will uh, protect our output. And then there's also the element of post-project management, how we will do data management, things to do with the restrictions, preservation of restric restriction, documentation, and metadata for reuse, and long-term support cost in terms of our outputs and ensuring long-term accessibility. So after going through the OLS training and even when I I saw the advert, I, I, I was working one day then, I just saw the advert and when it arrived in my email and immediately I put in an application because then I know after this training, I will be now equipped to manage product projects, right? Uh, better proposals and uh, be able to even win grants. So for me, the training has equipped me and made me more intentional towards uh, open science and even just being uh, able to to work with communities in these areas to be able to, to collaborate effectively with the people within South Africa and from different parts of the country. So it's, it's been a, a great, uh, learning experience for me. So I, I just intend to continue to even benefit from the other materials that I was able to we would, uh, just get to know about, like the Turing way. There are so many, during the one-on-one -on -one consultations, there were so many materials that I, I was uh, introduced to. So I believe by going through those materials, I will be fully equipped. So for me, it's more of a, a, a beginning step but uh, I, I feel that I'm now well-grounded and I can uh, build on that. So thank you for this opportunity. I hope to remain uh, in contact and also to be an ambassador of open science at my workplace and even when it comes to the students that I teach, work with and supervise. Thank you. Thank you, Benton.
and I love everything about data management. Uh, data management is a, a big project uh, and uh, I think you are doing uh, great. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you. Let's go for the next presenter, the Barati. Are you ready? Yeah, hi. Hi. Just a minute. Uh, let me share the screen. Take your time. Is it visible? Yes. Can you make it uh, full screen? Yes, I already made, but I don't know how it is showing. Okay, we can see uh, your all your slides. So if you can make it a slideshow, it will be better. Is it okay now? No. You can, if you can lose that, you can present as it is. Okay, I'm trying for the last time and otherwise I will just uh, present as it is. Is it okay? No, nothing happened. Okay, so uh, I think the slides are visible, right? As individual? Ye yes, but the first slide we can see half of it only. Okay. <clears throat> I don't know why this is happening because in my system it's everything is fine. Okay, this is uh, just fine. a suggestion. Maybe you are sharing your your windows from the slides, all right? So you can reshare it again and try to share your presentation. Okay, just a minute. Just a minute. Yeah, go ahead. The entire screen has better suggestion. Is it okay now? Yes, that's great. You can start. Okay, thank you. Thanks for the time anyway. Uh, so yeah, hi, uh, this is Debaroti and I did my master's at Marine Science Oceanographic. Uh, my interest lies on biology and I did my bachelor's in zoology. So naturally it interconnects. My interests are assuring ecology, GIS, remote sensing. I work with a lot of data, big data actually, and mangrove, ocean literacy and science communication. So uh, yeah, the, these are some recognitions I got uh, in the last two years. And these are my... I work in Indian Sundarbans. That's the Eastern side of India and it's in uh, West Bengal. So I work with zooplankton, copepods, abundance and biodiversity. I try to introduce a noble approach to this because usually we see copepods live. So when we are collecting this, we assume that everyone was like live when they were in the system, but it's not true as it is micro and maybe some of them were alive and some of them were dead. So just to assess the live death state of copepods, I use one stain and that's the work I've been doing for last two years. I use Microsoft Excel, R, MATLAB for modeling and ArcMap for GIS designs. So during this course of time, I introduced like few challenges to my fellow mates and also I myself, uh, thought about like maybe the data management plans and the open data resources. This can be something which need to be improved a little bit from the previous segments. So I developed this project on ocean literacy beyond the waves where the knowledge about marine science is really very low in India and there is no awareness. So I go to classrooms and visit another like uh, maybe some conferences, seminars, high end to make people aware that what India is doing and what we need to do in the next course of time to promote ocean. Now coming to the course and what are my key takeaways from the course. So especially I would talk about some specific methods that 
copyright issues, which I had no knowledge, like how to do this all. Maybe I'm sharing a photograph. So how to give the copyright and GitHub, open data resources, data management plans, group assignments to brainstorm what ideas we have inside us and just to make it available for everyone. And how to implement open science in oceanography. So I think I would be more prone to explore now open access publishing, data sharing, collaborations, how in India, in the global south, we can elaborate this and maybe introduce this open science concept in India. So and of course, with the help of OLS and NASA Nebula program, and it, it will be a collaborative, inclusive and transparent research ecosystem. And uh, this is my ID, if anyone wants to collaborate or yeah, go further. And thank you so much to the whole team. It's not about just a learning. I think it's about long-term friendship. So thank you so much, everyone, for this. Thank you, Debarati. Thank you for this presentation. I like your work. Thank you so much. And now let's go for the six presenter for today. Yasmin, are you ready to present? Yasmin, you are muted. You can share your screen now. Okay. Okay, Yasmin, you can start. Uh, hey, everyone. Uh, I am Yasmin Ashraf Hafiz uh, from uh, Giza, Egypt. I am uh, very excited uh, to be here today. I am uh, uh, 29, and uh, let's just say uh, 30 uh, is uh, not very lovely uh, on my door. Um, um, I uh, wear many hats. Uh, basically, I am um, a lecturer in the Department of Library and uh, Information at uh, Cairo University. I uh, teach uh, and mentor uh, students in the field of uh, information science. I uh, complete my master uh, in uh, 2020, a uh, focus on uh, co-working uh, co space uh, software in uh, libraries. Uh, later, uh, I also complete my PhD in this year, uh, focused uh, on uh, ERP software in libraries. Uh, on that side, uh, I am also co-founder uh, of uh, the Open Science Community Egypt, where I work, work as a marketing specialist, spreading awareness about uh, open science. Uh, and here's uh, a fun uh, twist. Uh, I am also uh, a marketeer and a real creator. I uh, love uh, uh, blending uh, creativity with the strategy uh, to create um, content uh, that uh, educate, um, is that educate. However, uh, it's also um, um, uh, a lecture hall on Instagram or marketing uh, campaign. I am um, uh, patient about uh, connecting with the other and making learning uh, fun and accessible. Um, favorite thing uh, I learned it. Um, my favorite uh, takeaway from this course uh, has been uh, the power of open science uh, to break um, uh, um, uh, barriers. Uh, this program showed me that open science uh, isn't just uh, a trend, it's a mindset uh, um, um, shift uh, toward mark, uh, making research more uh, transparent, uh, accessible, and impactful. Um, uh, number one, uh, it was op of open science. I was uh, inspired by uh, the 
uh, ether of open science, which uh, uh, promote um, uh, uh, freely sharing knowledge to drive global innovation. Number two, uh, fair um, uh, principles uh, stood out for me as uh, they make uh, research data for uh, findable and usable for everyone. Number three, uh, open science tools, uh, exploring open science tools uh, like uh, GitHub was uh, uh, exciting because they promote uh, collaboration and transparency uh, and uh, collaboration in uh, in uh, research. Number four, data management plans. Uh, I loved how uh, data management uh, can streamline uh, research by ensuring is uh, organized and um, accessible from the start. Uh, number five, open data. Uh, I appreciated uh, the concept of open uh, code where making uh, open uh, source helps improve uh, research, uh, improve your uh, research. Uh, number six, uh, open science, uh, open access uh, publishing. Uh, open access speed up uh, knowledge uh, sharing, making research accessible to all immediately. Uh, how I plan to uh, apply open science in my future uh, work, um, I will uh, do uh, several sen scenarios uh, according to uh, as a lecturer, as a co-founder, as a researcher. As a lecturer, I will integrate open science into my teaching by uh, introducing students to open access tools and resources. Uh, Co-founder, uh, I would organize, uh, organize an open uh, workshop and uh, uh, with my team, uh, I will organize a workshop and campaign to raise awareness about open science. And my goal is to building uh, a, a strong uh, community to offer researcher in Egypt who uh, embrace uh, openness and collaboration. Uh, sorry finally, for, uh, interrupting. Uh, okay. For a little as, time, so please okay. wrap up. Okay. Uh, as researcher, I plan to make my research data openly available, and I will publish my uh, research in open access journal and share a prepend, uh, allowing my uh, finding to be f uh, free. And thank you uh, so much for listening to my journey uh, with the open science. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Yasmin. I really like your presentation and uh, this is uh, so nice. Let's go for the next presenter, Iman. Are you ready to present Iman? Yes. Hi everyone. Hi Iman, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Uh, can I send a request for sharing? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So let me just can I take this? Sorry. Is there a way to minimize this? Okay. Uh, are my slides clear? You can just click on slideshow and start from the beginning. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Yeah, this is, um, I'm Iman Lahsani, and I'm an assistant professor at uh, Sultan Qaboos University. And I'm from Sultanate of Oman. And today I'm going to present for you uh, the part of the program, the presentation related to OLS NASA Nebula. So just a brief about me. I uh, got my BSc in statistics from Sultan Qaboos University, and I got MSc also in statistics from Warwick University 
in UK and I got my PhD also in statistics and probability from Durham University, UK. And currently I'm working as assistant professor at Department of Statistics at Sultan Qaboos University. And that's an image just from my university. And here is just some photos from my country. So we have really <laughs> wonderful nature between desert, sea and mountains. And uh, just part of my work as assistant professor teaching courses, uh, here are examples of courses that I taught and also currently I'm um, teaching students like introduction to statistics and uh, statistics for data science, simulation and modeling, discovering statistics using R and probability course. And I'm also actually part of curriculum committee in the department where we develop uh, courses and we try our best to be aligned with the modern statistics courses like statistical learning, machine learning, and data mining, for example. I supervised a number of students at BSc level, and that's also part of my job duties. So here is just example of it. And the first one I did is here, which is, sorry, which is open mining and sentiment analysis for Arabic tweets. So that was my first project I supervised. And I moved also for MSc. And also the first one was a comparison for off-term waiting scheme with application. And that um, mainly uh, natural language processing, NLP. And currently, um, my first experience as co-supervisor for a PhD. And again, it is related also for machine learning. We are trying to study the statistical asymptotic properties for imbalanced data. And uh, here are just my um, little experience with open source tools like GitHub. I shared my discovering statistics using our course there with the code. And uh, if there is time, I can share my my, my uh, shiny app there, but you can find it actually here the link of it. And also I used Zenodo before to publish my, my work and also like presentation, for example. And I try also to encourage people to use it. Regarding to the favorite learning from OLS, I really um, loved all the sessions and aspects and all of them are informative for me, but I have special focus currently with open data. And currently I'm working on a project of open data framework for academic research in the country. Uh, it is currently at the institutional level. I'm trying to uh, measure the awareness of uh, researchers and faculties uh, about the research data and open research data. And then I'm thinking to move uh, my knowledge from this course to the national level project. And that's actually uh, how I came with that project. That one motivated, um, I got motivation from Turing uh, Way, a pro dash book project where I actually came across the open, um, the data privacy and stuff. And I think all researchers are go through this uh, process from data collection until um, um, uh, sharing their results. But there are gaps regarding to the transparency of the problem, regarding to the storing data governance problem, infrastructure problem, transparency and accountability gaps. So I think this all required attention from researcher to ensure the uh, data are, we have all data, um, we need all like uh, data infrastructure to be in high quality, to be used by others and also to, um, we should also keep in our mind uh, that's required a um, lot of things like management system, technology skills, scientific data management, and so on. And of course, it will need continuous adjustment. And I would like also to adjust my research principles. And I think that has been covered in all other questions. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Iman. Thank you for the lovely photos from Oman. Yeah, I like it actually. Uh, this is so excited, the faults. I like your presentations. Uh, now I will pass the mic to uh, Irene to continue with the other, uh, the, the other presenters. 
Yeah, thank you, Doa, for keeping us um, on track and on time. We're doing really well for uh, such a full session. Uh, and so I encourage people to look over the chat. Um, there are questions there. And even though we might not have uh, time during the session to discuss them, please do answer them in the chat and we will copy them to the notepad uh, so that everyone can uh, see them. So our next presenter is Abdul. Abdul, are you sure to uh, are you ready to share your screen? Yes. Um, hi. Yes, I'm ready. Okay. Don't know if uh, everyone can see my screen. We can see your screen, but we see your desk desktop. We don't see the slides yet. Oh, sorry. Let me. One minute, please. Let me just like. So I see the SIM chat has been really busy with some resources that also for sure it's sharing about uh, a series of um, webinars on reproducibility um, and links to resources of um, you know, the Shiny app that Iman just mentioned. Um, so yeah, this is really exciting. I'm also kind of seeing this thread that we're continuing with some Kind of interest in sustainability, um, working with applications to climate, to land use change, um, as we saw during the first group. Um, and as well, this other um, kind of projects that are moving from an individual scale to institutional, to policy um, and to teaching. So that's all very exciting. Um, yeah, and featuring the during way illustrations uh, that Iman was sharing. There's a whole library for you to reuse, all related to uh, you know, open science concepts, code, reproducibility. Uh, there are open illustrations, so you can use them for your own presentations. You can change the colors. Um, there are they're really beautiful. Um, Abdul, I think I... your screen is loading. Still loading. Yes. Don't know why it's telling me my screen sharing is paused. Can you try to um, kind of turn it off and then come back again? Okay. I think it should be good oh, now. Yes, it is. Okay, so hi everyone. My name is Abdulaziz. I come from Cameroon and currently based in Cameroon. Recently graduated uh, from the IST University with a bachelor's in computer science and uh, affiliated to the Anora Breast Cancer Research Foundation. So uh, Anora is just a uh, kind of uh, association that was created by uh, a group of students, mostly computer science students, to raise awareness about uh, breast cancer. After uh, we had a, a series of unfortunate uh, events due to breast cancer, and uh, through this organization, we have been trying like to impact our different communities and get to know what's the main reason why breast cancer, breast cancer affects so much in Cameroon. So in the course of our research, we discovered that uh, the mortality rate in developed countries tends to be higher, like 10 to 20% higher than in African countries. And the number of cases diagnosed are equally very high. But the difference is that in Africa, we uh, many research have demonstrated that 
the cases that are not actually diagnosed could be even uh, equal or more than the cases that are diagnosed. About 40 to 60 percent of the actual cases of breast cancer in Africa are not diagnosed. And this uh, led us to developing our solution named Intelibra. Intelibra is basically an ultrasound based uh, portable device with a uh, an AI-assisted diagnostic tool, a telemedicine platform, and a cancer registry to help uh, early detection of breast cancer and screening in remote areas. Because here in Cameroon, for example, the screening capacities available cover only about 19% of the current needs. So we also have a, a virtual assistant we have named Maya, basically a chatbot that permits to interact, ask questions, and raise awareness on the breast cancer. So here is where the open science aspect of our project comes in. In the course of uh, developing our device, we uh, reached the stage of clinical trials. And for that, we needed some data to train our AI models. And we discovered that majority of the data sets available are mostly uh, for white women. And there is not actually a real database for black women, uh, breast cancer database for black women. And in order to have that, we created uh, a cancer registry software, which has as purpose to collect. We discovered many researchers turned to be interested, like they had difficulties in their own research in accessing this data. So we decided to bring in this approach of open science uh, in our registry where hospitals and other medical personnel around Cameroon can contribute to the registry with patient data. And then we make this patient data available eventually after uh, anonymizing them for researchers, uh, public uh, sanitary authorities. And our goal is basically to make this software widely accepted, like uh, permit everyone to contribute to it and benefit from it. Uh, Secondly, uh, launching our research foundation in order to create more uh, like uh, a greater scientific community, community that will work on breast cancer research, eventually finding treatments. And basically right now we are working on launching what we have called Intelibra points where uh, women will be able to do breast cancer screening at a cheaper cost and even in remote areas where there is a uh, difficulty to access electricity. So basically uh, this is what I'm working on and how I um, bring in open science to contribute to my work. Thank you. Thank you, Abdul. Um, that was an amazing presentation. Um, please give Abdul a round of applause. And I really appreciate that this project goes from the community level all the way into kind of a national scale um, project with impact in, you know, in many people's lives. So yeah, really, really impressive. Thank you for sharing. Um, so our next presenter is Jacinta. Are you ready to present? Hi. Yes, I am. Uh, okay. I'm going to share my screen now. Yes. Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Jacinta Oyekachi Chukwedu. I am a Nigerian. I had my first degree from Afebabalola University in Nigeria in biomedical science, and I'm currently studying for a master's in bioinformatics at Seaside University. I first learned about open science when I took the Open Life Science for Bioinformatics program that held around the middle of this year, around August yeah, this year. Currently, as I said, I'm a student of bioinformatics and I'm relatively new to the field because my undergrad was in biomedical science and I worked as the 
medical laboratory sciences for three years before I decided to go pursue my master's. So as I have been looking into the field, I realized that I have interest in epigenetics, which is basically understanding how the environment influences a person's genome. And um, I'm also interested in computational modeling of biological pathways. And I would like to see how I can apply computer science and artificial intelligence to the genomic field. Then in the nearest future, I am interested in getting a PhD. What I've learned during this OLS um, Nebula Open Science Program can be applied to my future direction. So over, over the last six weeks, I have learned about um, open data and open access, how to share data, um, repositories to share one's project. So I know that in the nearest future, when I start working on projects full time, because right now I'm still covering a lot of coursework, when I, tr when I start working on my projects full time, I would um, share most of them in Zenodo. I already have a Zenodo account. So I'll share most of them in Zenodo. Then I'll also share them in um, domain-specific repositories, that's um, like GenBank and MZMB. Then uh, I would make sure that I add the metadata to my data, because I, I have posted some of my codes to GitHub, but yeah, I just learned about metadata. I usually add a very short readme file, but now I know the importance, so I would lengthen it. Then I'll use more open source tools. I currently use Python. Uh, I'll try and use more. I also use SPSS, but SPSS is not really open because you need, you need to pay for it. So that way, I know many people might not be able to reproduce my work through SPSS. They'll have to use another software, so I'll also use more of those open source softwares. And I'll share my scripts on more platforms like GitHub and GitLab and make sure that I ensure that my code is transparent and reproducible. Then um, when I'm finally ready to publish something, I will post it or I'll publish them into open access journals. And I would use licenses, you know, the Creative Commons licenses to ensure that my work is distributed freely. And I will make sure that everything I do adhere to the fair principles, make it findable by adding a DOI. I'll make it accessible by put, um, publishing in open journals. I will make it interoperable uh, by using formats that people can access and, and use and reproduce. And then I'll make it reusable. So yes. Thank you very much. That's everything I have to say. Thank you, uh, Jacinda. Uh, please help me give you Jacinda, Jacinda a round of applause. And I really love how you in the you know in your learnings, you're pretty much telling us about a data management plan, connecting um, everything from you know data up to your um, you know, analysis and repositories. So yeah, it looks like um, it looks like you have a plan. Um, yeah. Thank you. So thank you for yeah. sharing that. Thank you. So we have our next presenter is Henry. Henry, are you ready to share your screen? Yes, please. Okay. Please do. Can you see my screen? We can see your screen. Uh, you want to expand that to presenter mode? Can I see it now? Yes. It's looking on? It's looking good. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, hello. Um, my name is Henry Onyo uh, Joko. Um, this is my learning experience so far. Um, the favorite thing I learned uh, here is um, 
learned about local science, everything about open science. Um, um, actually, at the beginning of this year, I was looking up to um, places where I could actually have um, a very good comprehensive training on open science and then um, fashion control on GitHub. And then along the line, I actually came across the OLS call for application, uh, which I actually applied for. And then um, uh, the rest has actually been history and history because um, I've been able to you know, grasp the basics of open science, the license, and then um, about GitHub. I'm a PhD student um, specializing in computational biology. And um, I primarily have a passion for bridging computational innovation um, with um, societal impact. And um, I'm currently on a collaborative project. Um, we have um, is a project that comprises of um, um, three of us across um, some countries in West Africa. You now we are trying to build a model that will um, predict plant pathogen outbreaks in the um, um, some selected uh, West African countries, especially Cote d'Ivoire, Niger, and then some part of Nigeria. So my plan to apply open science principles in a current uh, project that we are working on is to commit to the fair principles of findable, accessible, interoperable, and then reusable of um, both the data and um, the work I do. So I will ensure that um, all our data sets both the crop health, the climate condition, the pathogen spread data are fair. That is, they are fine, they good, they are accessible, and they can be reused. And then uh, in line with that, we will host our data on open access repositories, you know, such as Zenodo, and then the um, institutional platform that we intend to actually put them, host them you know, after we are through with our project. Um, we also intend to anonymize sensitive data to protect the privacy of contributors. So especially the small wood farmers, uh, most of, because we're going to collaborate with them, it's going to be like um, more or less like a code design in the design space. So we will ensure that we anonymize the data for privacy reasons. And then also for geolo uh, geolocations that we're going to use in the course of um, our predictions. And then also we intend to provide metadata and clear documentation of all our data sets. And then we, for the open access publications, we, we intend to publish our findings in open access journals to enhance visibility and collaboration opportunities. And secondly, um, in terms of the report, um, reproducibility and then the transparency, um, we will use um, the GitHub for our code sharing, and then also under the open license, we ensure all our scripts, all our workflows, all our pipelines are well documented, and then um, they are all version control using the GitHub. And um, we we'll, we'll provide the containerized environment when we are in terms in the Docker, uh, and then also, if possible. Um, we also use the, in the Python notebooks for our reproducibility for the code. Then we, for the methodology that um, we are going to use, we, we include the pre-processing, the feature selection, the upper parameters we need to enable replication. Then lastly for the, um, in, in also included in our plan is the community Involvement, like as I said earlier, in the design phase, through the co-design um, initiative or approach. So we're going to have a crowdsourcing data where we we'll collaborate with smallhold farmers and then agricultural researchers. What um, and specifically um, um, in West Africa, and also we are going to also um, try to get some data outside the region to collect diverse uh, data sets so that we can. Yes. Um, sorry, let me round up. Then the feedback we intend to incorporate is a feedback for the farmers and agricultural stakeholders into the model improvements and so to ensure practical relevance. Now, thank you very much.
Thank you, Henry. Please give Henry a round of applause. And uh, again, it looks like you have a plan already connecting uh, data uh, to community involvement. Um, and I appreciate that you are discussing open data and openness also with some nuance, you know, considering that not everything has to be open. There are very valid reasons for um, you know, keeping some data private. And um, you're also not only thinking about the technical aspects of open science, but you are thinking about community involvement and feedback uh, processes um, yeah, to make their research relevant. So thank you for your presentation, Henry. Um, moving thank on to, much. thank you. Our next presenter is Patrick. Patrick, are you ready to share your screen? Yeah, hello. Hi. Can you see my screen? We can see it. Um, do you want to put it in presenter mode? I'm coming, let me just adjust it. Yes. Yeah, and I see um, Ahmed comments on the chat. Um, as open as possible, as close as necessary. Um, that's uh, you know, one quote that really, really resonates um, with the approach of open by design. We can see your can slides see? now. Yes. Thank you very much for this opportunity. My name is Patrick Lamte Elante. Um, basically, I'm a lecturer and a research scientist for the Argentina Piamicans and Mafu, so we call it Amistad. Uh, I'm also a PhD student with the Kwame Kwame University of Science and Technology. I have a background in remote sensing and GIS. My research areas focus on water resources management. Uh, for my master's, I looked at uh, validating satellite estimates of soil moisture over a certain part of Europe. And um, when I came back to Ghana, to I did it in the UK. So when I came back to Ghana to do to further my work and then make it a more a bit more locally representative. One of the challenges I came across was availability of data. I realized that a lot of people have done, uh, have worked in different areas of soil moisture sampling, but um, you couldn't find where the data was being kept, how the data was uh, sampled, and it became an, a major issue for me. So I had to drag on and then pull my progress in doing my research back because then I, I didn't know of any C2 um, data that I could use to Further my work, and then there was also not funding for me to go into the field to gather the in situ data. So basically, um, those are one of the challenges that brought me into this. Um, I think I will jump this slide. So far, what I've been able to gather from this training is that open science is that it enhances collaboration and access to diverse data sets. It uses research for through shared resources. Uh, with a scientific benefit, improve research quality and reproducibility, uh, reproducibility accelerated innovation through open data sharing. And when it comes to societal benefits, what we also have is increased corporate access to scientific knowledge, uh, better informed decision making for water resources management. So basically, with my work and area of focus, what I aim to do is to make uh, soil moisture data available to stakeholders decision makers and the local community. One of the things that pushed me into uh, going, uh, specifically looking at soil moisture as a water resource management issue is that in the northern part of Ghana where you have uh, semi-arid conditions, Sahel conditions, they, there's a water uh, challenge issue or access to water for agriculture. And predominantly their work is, uh, the agriculture is rain-fed agriculture. And one of their main challenges is the onset and then cessation of the rainy season. So I had discussions with some of the local indigenous. And what they told me was that they had to dig, that sometimes they dig to the ground to a certain depth before the start of the rainy season to determine whether they should plant. And based on the moisture available in the soil, that is what informs their decision to plant and what particular crop to plant. And it's even, they are able to tell 
uh, how the season is, go is going to be based on just that uh, depth of uh, earth that they dig. So I believe that scientifically putting this into something that is understandable and explainable and also reproducible, it makes it easy for them to be able to carry out their livelihoods and then also enhance their living conditions in their local community. So challenges in my work which have explained, limited access to reliable and up-to-date data sets, computing resources, and then also funding has been a major issue when it comes to research down here. And I believe with open uh, data and environments, you are able to get data without necessarily having to repeat what or others have done at a lower cost. And this helps to keep costs down and also improve research output. So my personal goal for this open science after this open science project is uh, create an open access platform for monitoring soil moisture information in Ghana, where this data is available online for people locally and internationally to be able to access the information and then use it. Also ensure open access for data sets, register and ensure data sets related to water resource management. So in the course of my research, whatever I will be gathering, and then with my students that I work with, whatever information we gather, we we'll sort to register it and make it accessible. So students within the institution and outside the institutions who would want to do different work relating to what we do would have access to the data and wouldn't have to repeat what we've done already. And we also education and awareness. One of the key things is to educate my students on the challenges that I have faced in dealing with data and its impact on my research and also help them to appreciate these challenges before their career and then be make them advocates of open data science and that would help in this. Then I bring up this picture that we have we had or I don't know what to put it. We have what we call the Ghana Open Data Initiative. It's an initiative that started several years ago to try and make data accessible and freely available. So I'm rounding off. Thank you. So to try and make data freely available and accessible across institutions. Unfortunately, not many institutions have signed on to it. So what I also intend is to get our institutions to sign on to it. That makes it more attractive for that institutions to also jump on. Like I said some time back, charity begins at home. So if you want to, uh, what do you call it? Encourage something, you also have to partake in it. So basically, I think I've learned a lot from these uh, few weeks of training. And I thank the organizers so much for the support and the coaching that they provided. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick. Uh, please give Patrick a round of applause. And Patrick, I think you've really illustrated how open data is not, shouldn't be open just for the sake of it, but because it has an impact into, you know, in livelihoods when it is connected to, you, uh, you know, research. So um, thank you for sharing that. And I'm really curious if you have a link to the uh, open data initiative in Ghana, uh, please share it in the chat. Um, I'm sure well, that's going to be interesting for the OLS community in general. Um, and so we have one last presenter, um, Aminu. Are you ready to present? Yes, thank you, Budi. Hi. Let me share my slide. Yes. Please, can you see my slide? Yes, it looks, it looks good. Okay, thank you. Good day, everyone. Uh, this is my presentation. Let me start by appreciating the organizer of the Nebula program. Thank you for a very highly exciting program and the opportunity to be part of it. My name is Oluwa uh, Fumilari Olariwajo Aminu. I'm in Nigeria. I have my first degree in agricultural science from Obafemi Rural World University between 2002 and 2006. Between 2009 and 2011, I had my master's in agricultural extension and 
Rural Development from University of Ibadan. From the same institution, I also obtained my PhD in agricultural extension and rural development. I work as a research assistant between 2016 and 2021 in the University of Ibadan, in the department where I obtained my master's and PhD degree. Well, presently, I'm working as a permanent staff, as a lecturer in Ulusegu at the University of Science and Technology back in Nigeria, in the Department of Agricultural Economics and Extension. Also on research experience, I have undergone research for a number of organizations such as PASGA, Partnership for African and Social Governance Research on youth projects between 2021 and 2023. I've undergone field research for organizations such as Nigeria Institute of Social and Economic Research, IITA, the Nigeria Research Council of Nigeria. So aside those, I was, I'm also a voluntary journal reviewer. I review for national and international journal based on request. I'm an independent data analyst. And based on my exposition to open science this year, so I can say I'm an aspiring open scientist. Uh, the Nebula program is really an eye opener. So I've been able to understand the benefit accruing from open science. So I learned about the importance of green prints before submitting my work to journal. Then the importance of making my publication to open access. Prior to this time, I do not really understand open access. So I just published my work, but now I have a more understanding of that. Also, I used to back up my data in my email, but through this program, I'll be able to understand a more reliable way of documenting my data and my, and my work. I have a clear understanding of DOI. Before I used to think it's only journal article that can have DOI, but I can now understand that even presentation data and some other materials I can also generate DOI for them so that they can be visible and citable. Also, I learned about the importance of license. I can actually control how I share my data. So these are just some of the things I learned among other things. So my next step, so having understood the importance of preprint, so I already have a number of research that I've completed so I intend to publish more preprints because currently I only, I only have one. So I intend to publish more. Also, I want to go into use of open science platforms such as Zenodo and some other platform that I learned about during the course of uh, this program. So I'm more intentional about open science now. Also, I'm intentional about the journal that I select to publish my research work. So I will ensure that they are open access. Also because of the benefit accruing for open science, I intend to promote it among my colleagues. Also, I intend to sensitize my students about it. I ensure that whatever project, research project they are backing on, I want to ensure that it is publishable and is going to be in an open access journal. So those are the few things I have to say. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you, Aminu. That was a great presentation. Please give Aminu also a round of applause. Um, and what I really appreciated is that um, you are taking these concrete steps and uh, you know being intentional about open science and realizing that the tools that are available are also available, um, not just for journals, but also for everyone willing to um, yeah, kind of share their work more widely. Um, so yeah, thank you for, for the presentation. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm looking at the note that we don't have another presenter signed in, but I'm gonna ask if I have missed anyone maybe, if you want to present, uh, please let us know in the chat. Um, I know that there were some people um, in the spreadsheet that are not here. So I'm just kind of double checking that we're not missing anyone um, during this session. 
And I'm gonna give a one minute or two. And in the meantime, um, I'm gonna remind everyone that there are very good questions in the chat. If you wanna go um, back over the chat and answer you know, the questions related to your presentations or maybe commenting on um, what participants have been sharing, um, that's, that's great. We're gonna copy all of these comments and then we're gonna um, kind of put them on the notepad and kind of share them. I think there are some initiatives that are very inspiring and that I'm sure that they will resonate with the whole OLS community, not only with this cohort. So again, thank you everyone uh, for sharing. So I don't see anyone raising their hand to present. Um, I think then we are at the end of the session. I just want everyone to please uh, give a round of applause uh, for your amazing presentations. I agree with Doa in the chat that I love your takeaways and learnings from the cohort. Um, and I'm, I'm really proud of everyone. Um, thank you for sharing your learnings. Um, I think in the session and in the graduation session at USA, it has been our opportunity to learn from you and for the cohort to learn from you. I am always very surprised at the diversity of uh, projects that it, everyone is working on. Um, and I can only wish you the best as you go forward in your work. So I'm gonna stop the recording, but we have a group photo. Um, so please stay for a bit. Uh, but again, thank you everyone for joining.